feel the most when I'm alone I think of you cause when you're gone I remember the feelings They're hidden in the dark I never left my feelings shown I feel the most when I'm alone but now the rest uh, I'm Kelly And I'm Derek and this is our tiny house, tiny house, big sky. Parked here at uh, Park Delta Bay in Isleton. So the name tiny house, big sky came from the fact that we are eventually moving this house probably in the next year to Montana, to family property there. We hope to make our permanent home. The plan is to do farming and hopefully some sort of crop that we can be there in the summer when it's beautiful and summer, yeah. spring, summer, and fall, and maybe head down here or Mexico or wherever we want to go in the winter. I think if we were traveling, we would likely yeah. do a smaller RV and or, or tow behind. We've, we've actually got a retro canned ham at the, the ranch we're moving to that we want to rebuild and, and use that as our traveling rig. Mm -hmm. The tiny house is, as you can see, it's very large and heavy it's heavy <laughs> and it costs a lot to tow it it's not easy to tow it mm -hmm. if you want to move it around i'd build a, tiny, a smaller tiny house yeah there's definitely we had to get rid of some things but it does hold um quite a bit of clothes i think everything that we need to hang up is hanging up so that's nice and then our shoes are kind of down here so um it's nice to have shoe storage and hanging areas so and then this is our soon-to-be washer-dryer combo area. Right now we just have our coats hanging up. The decision to wait is more of just a financial saving up for, for the best unit we can get because we've heard kind of pros and cons to the combo unit, so we want to get you know, the, the best one we can, and it's, it costs money, so. We have um, a laundry facility here on site, um, so that's that's nice. I mean, we do have to kind of cart our clothes all the way over there, but um, for now it works. There are times when I wish we had a spot here to do it, but it'll happen soon. Gotcha. Um, something else to mention is this is our um, heat recovery ventilator, um, and it kind of draws air in and out and lets the house kind of breathe and keep fresh air inside. So this is something, yeah, we're very happy with that to have that this is our kind of indoor utility kind of closet it has the water heater um, we have a water pump in here um, to when we're if we're ever off grid to kind of keep the water pressure up but yeah that's just kind of utility we keep our cleaners down there and stuff like that uh, our hot water heater is a precision temp yeah we're pretty happy with it um, it's the one generation back from the newest one so can be a little finicky sometimes. We have to have a certain amount of water flow for it to trigger. So um, sometimes we have to kind of run the sink and the shower at the same time just to get the right temperature. So yeah, but I know Precision Temp is kind of working out the bugs in their newer models. So, so it is an on-demand, yeah. I've had to tweak it a little bit here and there. He's frustrated about it. <laughs> um, this is our shower. Um, we went with the horse trough tub. Um, it's nice to have because you can, it's pretty much a soaker tub, so you can really get down low and soak in it. Um, and it's lightweight, so that's nice too. We did kind of an exposed copper plumbing, um, just to kind of go with the look of the house. And this is actually um, waterproof flooring that we put up just to, I wanted like a stone or tile look without the weight. Um, and it's actually worked out really well. I think it's indestructible. <laughs> They're easy to clean. Um, and then we kind of have um, uh, an ipe, I think it's called, wood um, a surround for it. So that's nice. And then we even have, this is a fun little feature, kind of our makeshift, makeshift uh, rain head. Um, this is, we think it's kind of fun. <laughs> so yeah, all right. Yeah, we kind of like that look. So 
And then this is, um, I would say one of my favorite parts of the house is um, our kind of vanity area. Uh, we have an antique bowl kind of mounted on this dresser. Um, we kind of had to modify the top drawer, Derek did, um, for it to fit. But it's nice because the drawers are still functioning and can still store stuff in them. Uh, yeah, yeah, everything was found separately. This bowl was just a bowl when I found it and we had to get it kind of professionally drilled so that the drain could kind of fit, or for the drain. So, yeah, and then I found this at Valley Village. It's kind of like a Goodwill up in Washington. So, good find there. And yeah, the faucet's separate too, so. Yeah, five bucks. It's a good deal. <laughs> um, yeah, and then... This we've actually found at the dump. I don't know why anyone would want to throw that away, but so that was a find. We definitely have just in the house in general a lot of reclaimed pieces because that was really important to us. This was also I found at a thrift store. I kind of painted it up to look old. So the name of the color, it's from Ben Moore. It's called Lucerne. Um, they have, Ben Moore kind of has like a like an antique line that they have. So I, we kind of picked from those those colors. Um, I knew I kind of wanted blue to go with the blue in the sink and the blue in the floor. Um, and I think it kind of has a no nice pop of color. I wanted like a, an accent wall in the house somewhere. But in a tiny house, you have to be careful with the dark colors, obviously. So this was kind of a good wall to use for that. So this floor, it's actually linoleum. Because once again, we were kind of worried about our tongue weight out here in general. So yeah, it's linoleum. It's from, it's from the UK, I believe. It's from Atra Floors, yeah. So um, they have a ton of cool prints that you can choose from. Yeah, I mean, it's also indestructible, which is nice, <laughs> easy to clean. We actually have for our toilet over here, the uh, Airhead composting toilet, which is not as popular as say the Nature's Head or the Separate. We've been very happy with it. And a lot of people are kind of up and down about the composting toilet, but it was I think it was an easy transition for us. The one thing that we've modified on it is the the liquids tank in the front. It was filling up so quickly that it kind of became a hassle to take it out all the time. So Airhead actually makes a tank that has a fitting on the bottom of it so that you can plumb it into your your gray water line. And that's been We've made a lot of modifications in the house, but this is kind of like the best one, so. So yeah. So Tiny House Big Sky, like we mentioned, is in relation to us eventually going to Montana, being with Derek's family. And this is a picture of their horse ranch that we'll be living at. So it's just kind of a reminder about where we're headed and what we have to look forward to. Um, the window, you know, it's, it's nice to have it kind of a view from the toilet. <laughs> um, I think when we're out at the horse ranch, we'll obviously have more privacy and can keep the windows open. Um, it's also um, our egress window for downstairs. So, And then the beams, which are also over on the other side of the house, um, we got uh, up in Washington where we built the house, um, kind of uh, just privately through a guy who does his own milling. So the beams, the cedar beams turned out pretty great, I think. So Derek's setting up the ladder for us to go check out the loft. Um, the ladder is, this is the second version. <laughs> we kind of just had a makeshift one and then Derek made a, a nicer ladder. Um, so to get up into the guest loft, which we kind of uh, decided to have because we did leave, you know, Derek's children behind in Seattle and we want them to have a place to stay when they come visit um, and really just anybody coming to visit we want them to have kind of a comfortable private space to hang out in. Now we're up in our guest loft that we have for visitors coming in. This is like a bed futon thing um, which is nice. Sometimes I work up here so I'll put it up into a couch and kind of do my work up here. It has a nice feeling up here because we've got kind of windows above and to the sides and this is obviously really nice. Kind of gives it almost like a tree house feeling, we think. Um, we actually slept up here for a little bit 
while we were finishing the other loft. So slept up here a few times. This is a vintage find. It's actually from our neighbor down the row. She was getting rid of it and um, I felt like it really fit our house. So yeah, it's also nice for storage. Linens and stuff like that kind of go in here. This is also a, a new addition to the tiny house. The lights up here don't dim, so we needed kind of just a softer light for up here. So found this cool little gem in Lodi at a antique store. Derek's daughter came to visit and she did her homework up here and she said it was just kind of a very nice place, a productive place. So it's good to have. And you know, to have space from each other sometimes <laughs> is nice. <laughs> so here we are uh, in the kitchen dining area and we started out, we didn't have a table here. We had always planned on doing something, but uh, this table is kind of our prototype. I want to build something out of walnut or something more fancy. This is built out of a um, cheap project panel from Lowe's that you know, cost about 30 bucks. And actually we're very happy with it. It turned out pretty nice, um, but it folds down. Um, and then the panel flips out and, and uh, you know, creates a pretty good sized space. We actually sat four of us here just a few nights ago with when my parents were visiting and surprisingly we all fit. So when we have the table set up, we have a couple of things going on. We have stuff stashed everywhere in the house. In a tiny house, you have to get creative on storage. Uh, so to fold the table out, over here behind Kelly, we actually have a stick that's kind of just jammed in the trim. And I can show you that in a minute. This guy and the table, the hardware here for the table came off an Ikea table um, that they have. So this was our prototype to see if it would work. And it did. So the stick goes in there, the Ikea arm, table arm holds it up. And we actually sat one person here, one here, one there, and one there, and we were able to fit four people in there. So it was pretty great. This hardware, it, the table at Ikea was about 30 bucks, uh, and I bought it just for the hardware. I didn't even, I didn't use any of the wood. This is our dog, Ella. <laughs> One thing you get used to in a tiny house with pets is sometimes they're in the way. So then when this just folds down, oh, let me put this back and that folds down. So we have more room if the cat weren't there to be in the way. So this is Louise and she has made the tiny house feel much tinier. Uh, we got her as a kitten and she's kind of crazy right now. She's very mellow. So let's hope she stays that way. We left this as a shelf because I think we're going to do kind of a dog Murphy bed right here. So we can flip this up and get the bed out of the way uh, when we don't want it. So the chairs for the table are hidden behind the refrigerator uh, or on the side of the refrigerator. So we can pull those out. And then we have the fourth seat is the ottoman here on the couch that just flips open. So when the table's extended, it sits right about here. Perfect spot for it to be able to eat so or play board games or whatever. So back to the kitchen, about 60 to 70% of our house is reclaimed. The butcher block countertop we found in two pieces at a uh, second hand building material uh, store. And we got back here and it was about a foot too short. So I had some walnut laying around. We ended up putting walnut inlays in the countertop to stretch it out. Uh, you can see we've got this old dresser. Uh, the dresser is from probably the mid 1800s. Uh, it was a find of Kelly's on Craigslist and uh, we were able to modify it to to fit the uh, sink behind it and that kind of thing. Um, we actually, the top is used at the base of our ladder for the guest loft. Um, we were able to reuse that. The top had this initial curve. 
so I replicated that with the countertop and kind of made everything tie together. This one is just a face, uh, but this one where we store our vitamins and medicines and that kind of thing. So you can see we modified it to fit you know, just right. So we actually have, I think these ones are full, full storage. We keep our coffee and linens down here. Uh, and then this one's all our cleaning supplies. This whole system worked out great. I wasn't convinced. Kelly really likes to do all the reclaim stuff. And uh, as a contractor, I was always saying, yeah, I don't know, it takes extra time. And you know, it seems like a lot of hassle, but uh, I think using the reclaim stuff really made a lot of the, or, or gave our house a lot of the character that, that it has today. So it's totally, totally worth it. As long as you're not having to pay somebody to do it for you. So the faucet was a leftover from a job that I had in, in Seattle. And uh, I thought it'd be perfect in here. And I think it works pretty well. The sink we found also at a second, uh, second hand building salvage. It's acrylic and uh, Kelly thought she'd be able to clean it up a little more. Uh, it did not clean up as well as we liked. And honestly, that's probably one of the very few regrets we have on our build. Wish we would have gotten a different sink. Once it's in there, it's kind of in there. You know, it's going to be a struggle to find one that fits just perfectly to the cutout and, and that kind of thing. But it might be something we try and do in the future. Keep our eyes peeled for something. While a lot of the things in here are reclaimed, the three of the base cabinets are not. Uh, this base cabinet and this and the one on the end are both are all three uh, new cabinets that we painted and antiqued. Um, this one opens up and it's pretty much your standard cabinet. We did have to modify all these cabinets on this row for the wheel well of the tiny house. It, one thing when you're building, you gotta remember that that's gonna be there. It does kind of dictate where things go and, and that kind of thing. Uh, for example, our refrigerator had to go where it went because we needed to push it all the way back and the wheel well was in the way, so. So under here we keep our board games and that's kind of an interesting, I can show you the board game set up here. We used to have a stack probably about this tall of board games. And now we have a stack this tall. And we've added quite a few games since we set up this system and it, it works fantastic. So uh, one thing we've noticed in the tiny house is we definitely find different ways to get rid of the extra packaging and storage and, and that kind of thing. So it's one of the things we're like, we, so we do board game nights here at the park and we'll get people together in the community room and yeah, it's pretty fun. We end up bringing all the games, but <laughs> fortunately they're easy to haul around. Okay, so working backwards here in the kitchen, uh, our lighting actually came from, well, this light up here came from my family's ranch in Montana and it was in an old cabin. My mom found it and it was a little smashed up and, and that kind of thing. So we ended up rewiring it uh, and Shortly after we got this from her, we were in Arizona doing some work and came across this one in an antique store and they matched so well that we thought, okay. So that's been kind of a, I, I think a lot of people really enjoy the lights that, you know, the fixtures that we have here. So um, that's kind of one of our favorite things here. And I, I love that this one came from the family property and, you know, was in this old cabin that this winter the roof collapsed in it, so we're, we're lucky we got it. So in order to move the tiny house, we have to pull all the pictures off the wall, that kind of thing. The lights themselves, we put, well, we have a cup hook here. We put another one over here and a couple on either side and we end up bungeeing them together. So they're kind of pulled to the middle, but bungeed to the wall so they aren't swinging back and forth. And uh, otherwise that would, probably be pretty messy. So moving back in the, on this side of the kitchen, uh, we have Kelly really likes her. Uh, these are Hazel Atlas plates and bowls and these are Pyrex. And so she liked her, her cute stuff. I should be letting her explain this. 
this is her purview here. Uh, but so we wanted the open cabinets to be able to display that the storage on top was just kind of a bonus for the little bit of, we've tried to keep the knickknacks to a minimum. They keep creeping in and then we have to thin them out again. And, you know, but, uh, you know, there's stuff from our wedding up here and, and things like that, that are, have sentimental value. Another one of our favorite items is this dish rack, which unfortunately Ikea doesn't make. Sorry, folks, you might have to look on eBay, but it just flips down that hangs on the side. We put a drying rack or a drying towel underneath it and your plates just sit right in there. And, uh, it works pretty awesome and folds up and goes out of the way. So continuing in the kitchen, we have next to the drying rack, we have utensil storage, which is just S hooks to hang our most commonly used stuff. Kind of, uh, moving down to the cabinets. This is silverware, etc., And then pots and pans with pullouts down below. The storage down here seems to be pretty good. Uh, as far as space, we have things in here that we actually very rarely, if ever use. Uh, so we, we kind of continually are emptying things out. Hey, we haven't used this in a while. We do have a cooler for our sous vide that we use that, uh, I'd like to put down here, but that means we have to get rid of more stuff. So <laughs> we'll see if it happens in the future, but otherwise it, it holds quite a bit. We've found that we don't need all the kitchen gadgets that we used to have. We get by just fine without them. So I was a big fan of kitchen gadgets and now it's like, eh, it's okay. I don't need that. So continuing back, uh, we have, this is the bar up here. Uh, <laughs> so wine and smaller liquor bottles will fit up there, but, uh, nothing too big. So keeps us on track. Um, spice and storage up here, more glasses, etc. in this, this is kind of the random cabinet where the overflow, the range hood is one of the few things in the house that runs on 12 volt. So our house is RV certified. So we have 12 volt systems for all the RV appliances, uh, that are, that's separate from the 120 volt system. So the range hood, the furnace, the water heater all run off of that, off of that system, just because that's what the state of Washington wanted in our RV system. The stove was a fantastic find. It was, we searched for two months in five states on Craigslist for a white stove. All Kelly wanted was a white stove. And uh, all we could find was black stoves or avocado green stoves or brown stoves, <laughs> yellow. There were a couple yellow ones. So it was the day before I was going to order a brand new stove. We figured, okay, we might as well get a brand new top of the line stove. And this came up on Craigslist half an hour from our house for 200 bucks. And, uh, it's at least 50 years old, maybe more. Uh, the oven had never been used. It was pristine. Uh, and the, there's a little bit of surface rust on the, on the face here, but otherwise it was in perfect condition. And I called the guy and I said, Hey, I'll take it right now. So, uh, that was a fantastic find. We feel very lucky. And a lot of people who come in and see the house, this is one of their favorite things in the house. Uh, we have more pots and pan storage down below, uh, fits quite a bit of stuff. You know, like I said, we have definitely thinned down the gadgets and, and things like that. So, but we try and keep it organized and everything has its place. Uh, this has our propane detector mounted in the door. This is necessary for RV certification and for safety. Uh, if there's a propane leak in the house, this alarm will go off. We actually have it wired up so that it will shut off the propane tanks, the flow from the propane tanks, uh, if the alarm goes off. So that way, you know, just an extra, extra safety feature of the house. And then this is kind of the junk drawer. So in this corner here, we have our Nespresso coffee maker, which is fantastic. Uh, got that for Christmas and we really love it. Uh, and all the pods go in here and store. We like this because it was very compact. You know, we kind of 
like coffee a little bit. So being from Seattle, um, the devices on the wall here that we kind of stacked, this is our battery monitor. This, this is showing us what uh, percentage our batteries are charged to. The only 12 volt power we use is the range hood, the igniter on the furnace and the water heater. So these stay at 100% pretty much all the time. Eventually we'd like to put us out uh, solar power in and then we'll be using more of our battery power and, and using that more often. So then we have an Echo B smart thermostat, which definitely took some experimentation to get it to work. This requires a 20 to 24 volt system. Our system's 12 volt. The, it requires 24 volt AC. Our system's 24 volt DC. So there's little pieces and parts that I had to get from the local uh, Radio Shack type store to make it work, but eventually it did, it did work for us. So, uh, and we can control it with our phone and, or tell our Amazon Echo to turn the heat up, which seems kind of lazy since it's only 10 feet away. Uh, and this is the panel which shows our uh, power for, like this is our water heater, electric is on. Um, we have tank heaters that, we act that I actually wired into this. And then we have uh, holding tanks for gray water and fresh water that are monitored by this. So we can see what capacity they're at. We actually haven't used either. So um, honestly, I couldn't tell you if it even works. <laughs> So our refrigerator, we wanted a residential refrigerator because we uh, had heard that the propane RV style uh, can be temperamental and are very expensive to repair if they, if they get damaged or have any issues. Uh, and so we went with a residential, it's 18 cubic foot built by Summit. We got it online uh, at like ajmadison.com. I think it was about $1,200. When we got it, it had a tiny bit of damage on the back here. And so we called them and they took 200 bucks off. So thousand bucks. And I, I could maybe show you where the damage is, is if you look really close, but it's got tons of storage, nice, huge fridge. The refrigerator has been fantastic as far as the amount of storage we, or, you know, food storage we need. We've got a full freezer underneath and it's all drawers. So it works great. We skipped the ice maker because they actually can be problematic. Also, the refrigerator is energy star rated. Uh, so it uses very, very little power. Um, and we've been, been very, very happy with it and our magnet collection from wherever we've been. So it's, it's one of those things where you can just add things as you go. And so then we have our pantry area where we keep all our dry goods. Uh, it, pretty self-explanatory. Extra storage down below. Keep in mind that the wheel wells run from one end to the other. So the, the front of the wheel well is here. That's why the refrigerator's here is that's as far back as we could push it without having to go to the other end of the house. So all the bottoms here, there's a little bit of wheel well that, that gets in the way from doing full depth. Moving forward, we've got the uh, RV furnace. It's just a forced air. Uh, furnace built for RVs. I think it's it's like 1,900 B or 19,000 BTUs. Um, propane and 12 volt, a uh, little 12 volt igniter, and it runs um, all winter here. We probably used about fifty dollars worth of propane each month, and that was our cooking, hot water, and uh, heat. Yeah, it's, it's a great price for a heating bill. 50 bucks is hard to beat. And it is hooked up to the, the Echo B smart thermostat, which like I said, was kind of a project, but it, it turned out pretty cool. Uh, so we decided to do the stairs in this fashion, uh, because well, a, we wanted, we knew we wanted stairs just because they're easier to move up and down on than, than a ladder. Uh, like a lot of people, our tiny house journey kind of started with watching shows on DIY or HGTV and that kind of thing. And you definitely saw these types of stairs on there with all the storage underneath. It just seems to be a great use of space. Uh, you have to have that stair system. And really we wanted to maximize storage as much as possible. And um, 
You don't need a whole lot of structure for the stairs, so you're able to do things like the little cubbies that, that allow you a lot of storage. That was the, some of the other things in the stairs. We have sized, searched out and sized tubs that fit perfectly in the spaces. Um, this is a pet food container that works great as a trash can, you know, that kind of thing. This is actually where we store the pet food, is in these little tubs that fit perfectly under here. So, uh, and then this is storage of household, you know, we have some paint in there, touch-up paint and, and that kind of thing in the, the base there, so. Head upstairs. Um, so this, this uh, stained glass, um, we found also reclaimed. It was all broken up when I found it. I thought I could fix it by myself um, until I looked into it and discovered repairing stained glass is pretty tricky. So I, I took it to a, to a guy to fix it. And um, it was a lot of money to fix it, but it's a pretty special piece for the house. Um, a butterfly is pretty significant to me. Long story short, it kind of represents my mom who passed away about three years ago. So um, it's nice and prominent in the house and I can kind of look at it and think of her. So we also got the both octagon windows um, reclaimed off of Craigslist as well. Kind of a steal for those. And then um, this bed frame is, you know, mainly for just decor. There's no uh, functionality to it, but um, I kind of thought this wall needed something special on it because it's kind of something you see right when you walk in. Um, also found this bed frame at a, a thrift store and it was just kind of black and cast iron and it had gross globes on it. So I painted it up and beat it up to make it look old and then found these little birds to put um, on top. So, and then it, I think, it, you know, it works well to have a plant kind of hanging on it. The cat likes to climb on it, um, sit in the plant and then kind of climb up and over into the loft. Instead of just going up the stairs, she takes this way. So, <laughs> so this is up in our, what we call the master loft. It's about um, 12 feet long, so it's a lot of space for us up here. Um, pretty cozy. We have storage on either side, um, typical like Ikea cubbies. Derek's stuff's over there, my stuff's over here. Um, we've got a couple like bedside lights mounted to the um, wall here for just kind of uh, nighttime, kind of before bed lights. Let's see, we have kind of our more personal pictures up here of Derek and I and from our wedding. Um, that's uh, from our first dance. Um, let's see, and then of course, a huge skylight up here. It's really nice to kind of um, watch the trees change and watch the stars and the moon at night. Um, you definitely know when the sun's up in the morning, so <laughs> eventually we might make a shade for this when it gets a little warmer. Um, but it does open which is nice, um, a quick way to kind of cool down the loft is by opening that up. So that's pretty nice. It's um, pretty crazy how cool it can make the loft feel. Um, yeah, and so, you know, a decent amount of storage. I, even though I did a ton of downsizing, probably three to four pair downs of all my clothes and stuff, still have quite a bit. So I think I have some more work to do on that. Yeah, so these windows open, these are just fixed. Yeah, I mean, in the summer, we, we normally kind of open everything up, um, except we, we have a, an air conditioner, like w a window unit that we put in the other loft. Um, so when that's on, we close everything up. But, but yeah, we kind of put a, put a fan at the base of the stairs to kind of pull that cool air into the loft when we have the air conditioner on. Yeah, it, it keeps it, cool. I mean, it can get kind of hot up here, I would say. Yeah, and another kind of purpose of the storage over here is just for like the privacy when we do have guests. Um, we have a little um, curtain that kind of, temporary curtain that we can put up um, for privacy. So it's kind of nice too. 
Yeah. Oh, and the ceiling um, is kind of cool. We, um, I think you had, Derek had some leftover like tongue and groove from the job that we just stained a bunch of different colors and kind of made that barn wood look. Um, but yeah, I think it turned out pretty awesome on the ceiling, so. So our mattress um, is from Tuft & Needle, um, who I believe at this point got bought out by um, Beautyrest. But um, it's the mint mattress and it has been awesome for us. Um, we really love it, I think it's the most comfortable thing ever. We do have um, kind of slats underneath to keep the circulation going underneath the mattress because I think that can be an issue if you have your mattress just right on the floor it can damage the mattress and kind of be a place for moisture to collect so I think that's important. So the ladder we built uh, we had a temporary one just built out of regular two by fours and I didn't like it very much. I actually want to build one out of like walnut and oak and you know make it fancy with tenon mortise and tenon joints and that kind of thing but this was our upgrade for the time being built out of redwood and uh, it just comes off and hangs up out of the way these were like ten dollar towel bars from Hobby Lobby that worked out pretty well so the our living room it's all kind of one big room, but our living room consists basically of our couch and we have a TV over here or uh, a projector screen that we pull down. So the couch, we initially had a different couch here that we purchased from uh, some friends of ours and it was nice. It had lots of storage, uh, but it wasn't as comfortable as we would have liked. And we actually wanted to add more sleeping room in here our house we can actually sleep six people in it now which is kind of crazy i don't know if we would ever sleep six people in here but we have that option if we want um, the other thing we thought of is if our family came to visit and they didn't want to deal with the stairs to the loft or the ladder to the loft there is a main floor bed that people can use and and not have to deal with that so um, so we just built this new couch which replaced our old one Kelly did all the sewing, uh, and it has two ottomans that pull out, turn into kind of a chase lounge type or sectional type, and then it also folds down into a bed, and there's tons of storage inside. The whole base is all storage. So, And we have lots of opening windows here, so we get good airflow. Uh, that was kind of important to me. I wanted things to just stay fresh in the house and, and be able to cool it off quickly and, and just enjoy the outdoors. Not just see the outdoors with all the windows, but actually be able to, you know, get the fresh air. So our projector system, we started out with a TV that was just mounted over on the side here. Uh, we decided we wanted something that we could kind of put away. Uh, so we went with a projector system this projector came from Amazon. It was like 50 bucks. Uh, super inexpensive. It's not real high end. Pretty basic, basic unit. But it does what we need. The more expensive ones are brighter and, and that kind of thing. So we could get away without having to maybe turn off as many lights when we watch TV, that kind of thing. Uh, so the projector itself mounts here. We have cable, uh, HDMI cable that runs down and all our video runs off of, whoops, this is an Apple lightning adapter to HDMI. And we found, so we, our, our internet here is actually all cellular based. So we have to use our Verizon plan to stream our TV. And we found our Roku, which we initially used, burned up our data in like three days, done you know, which was pretty frustrating. The, the uh, nice thing about this uh, adapter here is most of the phone companies don't count streaming video off of your phone against your data cap. So when you plug it into this, it mirrors your phone onto the projector. It doesn't count against your data. It doesn't slow down. It works awesome. And we use Verizon for that. Uh, 
we actually purchased a third phone line so we could just have a dedicated plugged in it becomes kind of our remote control and media center so once we have our phone hooked up over here and and that kind of thing the projector sits up here turns on nice and easy we have a screen on this side that fits that was probably the hardest thing to find was a small enough projector screen <laughs> they're all huge uh, because most people when they're looking for a projector they want a big screen but we found one that fit kind of up in the framing of the loft here so it was nice and discreet and so the screens there we have a sound bar down below and uh, great sound and the video it's pretty good for 50 bucks um, I, I'd like to get a better projector at some point but this definitely does the trick. It is HD, but it's not quite as bright as it could be for like daytime viewing and that kind of thing. So uh, the, the other projectors would, more expensive projectors would definitely be brighter and easier to use during the day. Uh, so the couch, I, I mentioned prior that this was something that we built to replace our old one. I've actually gotten into building tiny house furniture more as we live here in the park and there's 12 tiny houses, a lot of the neighbors were like, ah, eh, this isn't quite working for me. So I built a uh, convertible bed that's kind of a Murphy bed on wheels uh, for one of the neighbors that worked out fantastic and benches and you know, all kinds of different things for uh, different people who are looking for storage and you know, convertibility in their furniture. So this, this couch was for us, which was kind of nice to work on our own and be able to figure out a way to make it work. All right, well, this is our porch area. Um, we kind of decided to do a porch just because we already had the um, loft hanging, the extended. So kind of just figured build down and make a porch. Um, it's, as you know, at tiny houses, it's, nice to kind of have extra space outside this door we found also at a, a salvage yard um, kind of left it weathered obviously the dog wants to go in <laughs> just wait Ella yeah so I think it's a pretty special part of the exterior um, kept the paints original add kind of obviously a new doorknob and lock just for safety purposes um, this light was also um, a good find. Um, it's made out of kind of old uh, wine barrels, so it adds a nice touch to it. Yeah, we just kind of have a few nice, nice touches on the porch just to give it a, some character. So we uh, spend a lot of time out here when the weather is nice. It's been a pretty wet winter in California, and uh, so we didn't get to stay out here as much as we would have liked but um, the outdoor space is fantastic for uh, getting out of the, I wouldn't say cramped quarters of the tiny house, but just, just you know, a, a change of scenery. Um, we spent a month in Arizona, and that was the first time I had spent any time in the winter away from Seattle, and uh, realized that about a weekend that I had been doing winters completely wrong and I should spend all my winters where it's a little more dry and a little less wet so just to note uh, we've got um, reclaimed cedar siding as well that I spent many many hours planing to be the right thickness um, just so we didn't go over our width restriction of eight six in the long run, State Patrol didn't measure it, which was kind of a bummer for me because I did spend so long thinning it down. But um, it was nice to reuse some, some old siding and I think cleaned up pretty well with the, the paint that we put on it. So we just finished painting the house about a month ago, maybe a little less, um, and it only took us two gallons of paint to paint the outside so we were able to get some really top quality paint to paint it and um, yeah so it was nice that it wasn't a very expensive uh, project for us hey thanks for watching our video we hope you enjoyed the tour of our house we love living in our tiny house and uh we think you will probably love living in a tiny house too once you pull the trigger. If you want to keep up with us, you can follow us on Instagram or Facebook at Tiny House Big Sky. 
and uh, we hope to see videos of your tiny house soon. So if uh, anybody out there needs help design, planning their house, uh, build questions, etc., cetera, uh, we are offering consulting uh, for any questions you might have. Uh, if we can't answer it, we'll help you find somebody who can. And uh, you can do that at foryourtiny.com. That's F-O-R-Y-O-U-R-T-I-N-Y.com. And uh, the links are down below. Mm -hmm.